What's up everybody? Welcome back to Old Folks TV. We're back out in the shop today. We're working on the, the big motor here, trying to get this thing buttoned up so we can get it in that bus uh, so I can finally start driving it. We're, we're making some good progress, but as is the case on most projects, two steps forward, one step backwards. Um, we got the hard fuel lines done. Everything is nice and perfect. The length is exactly right. So those are getting ready to be painted. Uh, but we're still kind of fiddling around back here with the throttle bodies and the linkage uh, mainly. I was just trying to get it adjusted and I kind of noticed that my the, the pulley wheels, you know, we have the sync link set up on here, uh, which is a cable throttle, uh, which is super cool, man. It's the cleanest, smoothest, best operating throttle linkage I think I've ever seen for dual carbs. It's badass and I've only driven it, not even in my car, it's somebody else's car. It was amazing. Uh, so, I was noticing that the pulleys didn't line up quite straight with the uh, the cable guides, and you'll see what I mean later. Uh, but I was going to just make some spacers and kind of shim it and, and hot rod it myself and get it to work. And uh, Pete over at SyncLink, who is the creator and uh, the, the maker and the seller and all that of the SyncLink system, he happened to see a picture of my bus, or of my motor rather, and he said, hey man, you got the wrong brackets. Uh, apparently when I bought those, I bought them for the Weber carbs that were on the motor originally, uh, thinking that's the way I was going to go, and when I switched to the EFI, even though the bolt holes are the same, everything's just a little bit off and it just wouldn't line up properly. So uh, he was nice enough, he went in and sent me out some correct brackets, uh, nice and shiny aluminum polished brackets to go with my polished induction system here. So. Uh, I figured now would be a good time to show you guys how to install that, uh, that sync link system, get it all put together, you know, get it adjusted and get it on the car perfectly. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do that today. I've got everything laid out on the table. I got my tools set up. Uh, so we're going to change the camera and we will get to installing. All right, so here's what you get in the kit. Uh, we'll just kind of go through as if we haven't already installed them on a few different motors. Uh, so here's what you get uh, and there's actually more that you get that I don't have on the table right now because it's kind of already put away or installed on the bus uh, but this is the meat and potatoes of it this is the the important stuff um, so you get of course the two brackets um, that you know sit on your carbs or your throttle bodies or whatever you got and he sells these for IDFs he's got them for IDAs he's got them for the throttle bodies um, the CV throttle bodies very specific on those and I think he's got them for something else on there I looked at his website um, but it's been a little while and he's always making new brackets if you want them and you have some other kind of weird funky thing on there I bet you he could accommodate you I'll throw a link uh, down below to where you can contact him and you can buy your own kit so anyways you get these two brackets and you get these two sort of cable guide uh, you know the vertical pieces here um, you get the important pulley here that goes on the front you know, your, uh, where your linkage would normally bolt to. If you're running the Porsche shroud like I am, you gotta put it on the back, so all of the instructions will be backwards. Wherever he says driver's side, you're gonna put that on the passenger side and so forth. Uh, so you pay attention to that, depending on what you're doing. But if you're just putting it on a regular old motor, driver's side is driver's side, passenger side is passenger side. Everything comes labeled perfectly. I mean, the instruction booklet that he gives you is like a freaking book. Um, this one's pretty worn, because it's old been well used uh, but you get the wheels you get a little plug to cover the center just to make it look nice uh, that's you know just a nice thought you know you got this nice kit and he gives you something to kind of hide the bolts to make it even cleaner thought of everything um, you get a crossover cable which goes basically between these two you get an accelerator cable um, you get the sleeve. This is the sleeve that goes between the two carbs or throttle bodies or whatever you got. Um, just to keep the cable sliding nice and it should have a little bit of a bend to it. It shouldn't be tight. Um, this one's a little bit tight because it was on a different motor and it got cut short. So I'm going to replace this with a longer one, but this will work for today. Um, he gives you plenty of extra so you can kind of get it in there and, and get it nice and trim it to your size. Uh, you'll get another one of these for the accelerator cable which he sends you uh, that goes up to the front and this will go into, it's on the first page of the instructions here, uh, right where the Bowden tube for the clutch cable is. It acts as kind of a Bowden tube for your throttle cable. 
Um, that way it goes down in there and he's even provides you a little billet spacer, you know, that that can go into to make it nice so it pops right in that hole and it fills it, you know, super nice. Goes down right next to the transmission, uh, just where the stock cable, you know, runs down. But this way nothing's exposed, everything is, is encapsulated, uh, you know, in this nice tube. Um, you get your cable adjusters, you know, which thread into your brackets here. And this lets you adjust the tension on your cable so you get perfect, you know, perfect action. Um, you know, it's, it's great. Now we get to look at the difference. Um, this is the passenger side or what would be passenger side on my bus. <clears throat> this is the driver's side on a regular car. Um, they almost look the same, almost. But if you look here, the carb one is kind of machined out and the, the other one for the throttle bodies actually has is, is got a little extra on it so it's kind of spaced up. Uh, this will let you align the pulley where the cable comes out. You want to align that perfectly with the top of the pulley. You know, mine is currently down here so the cable kind of dips down and you don't want that. It puts undue stress on everything. You want it to be nice and linear. It'll pull nice and even. So, you know, we got the new ones we're going to put on. Uh, super easy. It takes like 15 minutes. You know, a little longer for me because I had to move everything from the front to the back. Uh, but still, not too bad. It's like two little nuts and a couple little bolts and that's it. So let's jump over here to the motor and we'll take a look. And before you know it, we'll be going fast. Come on. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is take the, uh, the nut off of your throttle shaft here. And be careful because there's always washers and stuff back there. You don't want to lose any of that spacers and washers. And then you're going to install your pulley wheel. Um, it makes a difference which one because the driver's side on your car or the passenger side on my car is going to have uh, two of these. One is for the throttle cable and one is for the crossover cable. So you want to make sure you get the right pulley and the right, uh, right carb or I'm just going to call them carbs from now on. It's a little easier. Uh, so I'm going to put the uh, spacer back on there and the little nylock nut. I like those because they don't get loose on you uh, with vibrations and such. Uh, oh, and it does make a difference the direction you put these on because they are keyed back here to go on that throttle shaft. Um, you want to make sure you follow the instructions and put those on the right way. Uh, for my particular application, they're going to be down here because when the throttle cable pulls that, you want it to pull from down here and then it's going to pull the crossover cable from over here. It's going to pull it underneath and that's what's going to rotate that one. So uh, these are going to end up, I don't know, around seven o'clock ish on the uh, the old dial there and then this one just has the single uh, and it's going to pop on I think that goes around four o'clock if I remember correctly from the instructions put our spacer on there and these don't need to be mega mega tight you know just snug snug enough to move uh, but not pull that shaft out of alignment. Uh, so that's those on. Next thing you want to do is put your brackets on. Again, it makes a difference which one, because one's got the two holes in it, one's got the single hole, and on the two hole one, the bottom hole is threaded. Uh, so this, in my case, um, is gonna be the passenger side one. Pop right on there. Um, you're gonna need longer studs for this. They're not included in the kit, uh, to my knowledge, but they are easy to get. Mine are on the way, so I'm just gonna use these rusty old nasty ones for now, because uh, we're still in the mock-up phase. Uh, so there's that. And um, again, I'm installing the ones that have the spacer on them here to get them up aligned with the pulley a little better. And I'm um, using these nuts you know, these sort of tall exhaust header nuts 
uh, because I have to make a bracket separate from these that will hold my fuel rails down through the hole back here. And I'm gonna thread it into the top of those. Uh, so we wanna, we wanna make sure that we have room for that. You can use a regular one if you want. I also like these because they're kind of shiny and they take an 11 millimeter, which is handy. A little smaller, easier to get into. All right, brackets are on. Next thing we want to do is install our crossover cable. And that's included with the kit here. It's got these little barrel nuts on there that have, uh, you take this little Allen key and you stick it in there and you kind of you know, loosen it and you can pull the cable out so you can replace the cable. Don't lose those barrel nuts. They also have a little flathead, really tiny, hard to see, little flathead side on there so you can uh, get them loose if they're really stuck. Uh, so what we got to do is we're going to feed the clean end of that cable into this guide tube. And again, yours will be much longer. Mine's been cut. Sure did. Try that again. Uh, mine's been cut to fit a different motor. All right. <laughs> so we gotta thread the. This is the threaded one on the bottom of that bracket there. Well, your side would be the driver's side, mine would be the passenger side, I guess. And once you get it, there we go. Once you get it fished in there, then you put your, your nut on this side. It's been a little while. And this is your adjustment. Uh, you make that shorter and longer to uh, fit your application. All right, now we got it. And then this fits right into the uh, bottom bottom uh, hole there. The throttle cable will go in the top one. And then there's another one of these cables, like I said, or this, this guide that goes here. And the throttle cable comes through the top and, and down through your shroud and, and all that. I'm not going to put that one on right now because it's currently on my bus. <laughs> uh, but this side has... This is another little spacer and a sleeve. Put that through there. That goes on the end of that. And then this goes on here. There we go. And then we'll put this on here. Just like that. And yours is gonna have a bunch more slack. Mine, like I said, it's too short, so it's not it's not correct. It's actually gotta dip down and kind of come back up. Uh, you wanna give it that room to flex and not be so tight like mine is. Uh, and that's, you know, that's basically where you're at. You can take the, uh, the other barrel nut and you fish your cable through here. And change sides. See what I'm doing. And then you get that sort of seated in your pulley there. You lost it. Well, in any case, you go around and push it in there and you tighten it up 
um, just so it's snug so that when you twist the other one uh, and you'll see I'm gonna I'm gonna change the camera around so I can make the adjustment and you can actually see what I'm doing uh, and then we'll we'll do that so let me move this camera now you can see a little bit better uh, the adjustments that need to be done uh, the cable is way over here and the pulley is way over here and they should be perfectly in line so we have a few things we can do to adjust that uh, firstly on the back of this there's a little screw a little set screw that will give you some you know some adjustment one way or the other like fine tuning so this is pretty much mashed in there all the way down as far as it'll go and it's better you know the alignment is a little bit better Let's see if I can show a better view of that there we go right there so now you can see the cable you know it's a little bit better but it's not exactly where we want it we want it to be perfectly straight so there's no drag on there at all um, so what we can do I'm only using the impact to take it off <laughs> I don't use the impact to put it on because that's no good uh, remember those spacers I said not to lose Put one of those guys on there and see if that does us any good. Besides making it hard to find the... Sounds like the neighbors are out there playing around. All right, so just hand tight for now until we can get a good, good eyeball on it. Okay, now the pulley's out here and the cable's a little too far over there. This is where that fine tuning adjustment comes in. And you wanna look straight on at it and make sure that that cable sets right in the middle of that groove. And right there, we got it. So then you come back here and you snug up that set screw. You know, now our pulley is, is dead right on in the center. We got the same thing on this side, which I've already adjusted. And now when we pull on this one, it opens that one just perfect. Just perfect. Here, look at this. Sorry for the tripod noise there. So that, that throttle cable is gonna come around the bend. It's gonna come through here uh, into, into this bracket. It comes to this side of the pulley. The crossover cable comes to the bottom. So when you twist it, you know, you're pulling the inside one. Look at that. And it's perfect and it's all the way you want to make sure you run it all the way through to full throttle and make sure this one you know they're both wide open it's perfect when they align like that you know you got it right so we take our, our little allen wrench here now that we got it set up correctly we want to make sure that this has just the tiniest little bit of slack in it so that I mean, not even slack, just, you know, just not mega tight because we can do the adjustment, you know, via this cable here. Um, and then we'll cut off the excess of the crossover cable. Uh, once we've got it totally figured out, you don't want to cut anything until you're totally ready. Blink, 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 blink. Perfect. And that's it. Set up and adjusted. Um, you'll have a little bit more adjustment when you put the throttle cable on, but again, I don't have that piece with me right now. Uh, but it's the same thing. It just goes in here, it attaches, and then the black part is much longer. It goes all the way back down to the, um, to the pan or to wherever your throttle cable pops out of your, your chassis. So, you know, that's it. And then uh, you just kind of let that thing float in there this is how you make your, your adjustments because you have a bend in it you know you can you can take some bend out of it and that makes the cable a little bit looser or you can put some bend in it and that'll make the cable a little bit tighter mine doesn't have a lot of play but it will. See now that cable is a little bit tighter. 
You want to make that cable sit just like that so that when you move this one, that one moves just like that. So my cable is now a little bit too loose. Um, so I'm going to make you know some fine tuning adjustments. But as long as it's straight on the pulleys, you got it. And then you make sure all your hardware is nice and tight. Make sure that you tighten down uh, with the Allens, both of your uh, upright brackets here. Once you get them aligned, you don't want those moving on you. Uh, and then the, the finishing touch, put the little caps on. Bam, ready to go fast. Just like that. It's a thing of beauty. I love these things. Uh, let me pull the camera back here and we'll wrap it up. All right, there you go, gang. Boom, sync link. Best throttle linkage you can buy. <laughs> My favorite anyways, I don't know. There's a bunch of different ones. Everybody likes something different. Um, the Berg ones are pretty cool too. Scat uh, makes a nice one, CSP. There's a million different linkages out there, but there's only one like the Sync Link. And I've used all of them. This one is so smooth. You can't believe it. I mean, you can't believe it. This plus the Buddy's Bits deal on, a, on the gas pedal for the bus. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's like driving a brand new car. It's so smooth. Can't say enough good things about it. Pete's a great guy. If you got any questions, uh, hit the link down below. You can send him a message uh, from the Samba, and uh, you know he'll answer all your questions. Like I said, he's uh, he's pretty knowledgeable about this. I think he's on like the fifth generation of these. He's been making you know little tweaks and little changes, and he makes them for a bunch of different carb setups. Uh, so definitely worth checking into it. Um, and it's not that much more when you start looking at uh, you know the performance linkages that are out there. Uh, from all these companies like the CSP ones and the Berg ones and all this it, it's right around the same price range you know and you get something something different even at the shows you know everybody's got the same stuff so it's nice to have a different kind of linkage you know something to look at and go ooh, what is that so definitely give them a call or shoot them an email um, the sync link is what it's called and uh, it's good stuff so hopefully we can get this motor done soon now we've got that adjusted and get the fuel stuff done uh, a few more little odds and ends. I think we got to get the oil lines, you know, ready to go and uh, figure out where to put the ECU and uh, oh yeah, paint. <laughs> but uh, we're going to get there. We're going to get there soon. I'm sure of it. So, you know, thanks for checking us out. Get the uh, Teespring link down below there if you want to get some really cool old folks TV swag. We got the winter time coming up. Uh, we got the hoodies on there. You know, that you look great at school or at work or at the beach or at the gym, wherever you wear hoodies at. Uh, so get one of those. Check out our friends at Volks America Magazine, Volks Mania Magazine. And uh, thanks for watching.